caller telling me that he was glad that I should be glad that uh, Floyd's case wasn't tried in front of him because he would have been found guilty too. That's what uh, existed back in 76 and, and 77. And that's what existed in 76, 77 is Floyd and I in our, in our courtroom were the only two black faces in there other than family. Mm. Uh, and it was because of my belief that the facts just didn't, didn't back up the, the story that the district attorney was coming up with, didn't back up the story that the police were coming up with, that allowed me to be able to, to show that Floyd was not guilty, and in a sense, these guys were not guilty. And I say that it was, it was the facts and the way that we presented it during our trial. Because 1976, 1977, as a black, even now, as a black defendant, things aren't necessarily just, and things aren't necessarily going the right way. You can only begin to think, back in 1976, 1977, a young black man charged with killing an older white guy, being defended by a young black lawyer, what we had going against us. And clearly, it had to be the evidence that was presented that convinced those 12 folks that they were not guilty. And so, back then, I started arguing why they weren't. And over the years, John and I, communicated uh, over the years we got together and he would he would even come down to uh, see me when I was on the bench and when I was on the bench even though I was a sitting judge this this injustice was something that I could simply sit back and keep to myself and so uh, we talked and John was telling me about the different lawyers that uh, they were talking to and even though this victory is sweet one of the things that bothers me is that this victory could and should have been had years ago. And it could and should have been had years ago if the lawyers that were involved in, in, in the 440 motions that were brought by them had even taken the time to come and talk to me about what happened in my trial that justified a not guilty verdict that could have been used in their case. But not one lawyer who really got involved in the motion time to come to find out from me what there was that was different in my case that was different in their case and these motions and I would tell John that these motions that they were filing I had no idea what they were basing them on because they didn't really understand what this case was about and when those motions went in and those motions failed I wasn't I wasn't surprised and it was only as a result of within the last 24 months Betty and, and Wilmington Warriors got together and started, and Cheryl, her daughter, making this more public and getting out into the streets and trying to get to different organizations and trying to get to key people in the city of Buffalo to talk about this case. And unfortunately still, there were folks here in this city that have influence, have had influence, that if they had stood up a lot sooner, this this victory may have come a lot sooner. But I'm glad that uh, Reverend Pridgen, once he heard the story, got to Paul Cambria. And Paul Cambria then put the motion together. But the motion, that, remember now, that's one thing I, I told folks, and I told Betty too, that the motion that Paul Cambria put together that resulted in what we're celebrating here today is exactly what I was talking about years ago. And, a lawyer finally sat down with me, talked with me, got what he needed to go forward and get to the judge. I put it, put it together, went to court, and I'm just glad that I was around to be able to testify and, and give some assistance in getting this victory. So, John, John, these guys need to be congratulated not only on the on the victory, but congratulated for the fortitude they had. Yes, there, there are many, many people, and, and over the years, John and I talked about this, and folks out in the street talk about this. Well, they're, they're, they're out of jail. What are they complaining about? They should just be happy and go on with their lives, as opposed to, no, John was saying there was no way in the world that he was going to be able to let this conviction stand, because it wasn't just him, but it was his son. Who would be tarnished by a conviction that was that was just. And so they persevered, they stood strong, they've uh, done
little one, a lot of guys, a lot of women haven't done. Others would have given up years ago. They would have said, I've run into a wall for so long and not enough, nobody believes me. Nobody wants to support me. Nobody's helping me. But when people came forward, they saw that there was an opportunity to possibly change things. And the determination, and, I, and I've seen it over the years, what it's done to John. I mean, this, he, it's worn him down, but he's, but he's still been standing strong. And I know as they go forward, people talk about there's a next step. But as I was telling John before he came up here, yeah, there's one more step, but you got to make sure that that step is done the right way. Yes. In order to make sure that there's yet another victory. And so we will be sitting down and we'll be talking about how I think that next half step has to be done. So nothing can be thrown at them to stop them from getting that second victory. Yes, sir. So I, I just want to thank them. Uh, you know, folks thank me, but I just want to thank them for for being strong and over the years allowing me to yeah, give I'm assistance, give direction, give some, some counseling. And I want to thank Betty and her daughter in particular for, for what they've done. Uh, you, they're the ones who kept it uh, on the front page and in, in the front uh, well, they kept it on the front page. I even saw uh, on Facebook the other day where Betty was going to be there for one of the final chapters and listen to the at the VA's office. But once again, somehow, some way, uh, the only dark spot there was on the lobby. So, so the, fight, the fight continues. The fight continues. And there are many more Johns out there. There are many more guys out there, men and women. And I just hope and pray that uh, they get the kind of support that these two guys have gotten. And they too uh, will come back victorious. Because there is light at the end of the tunnel. It just depends on who's helping you get to the end of that tunnel. Yes, you, you can see it and never reach it Amen. because nobody's there pushing it along. Amen. And I'm just glad that all of you here have been part of that point for the victory that they celebrate for themselves. So that's, that's all I want to say. But I guess as a lawyer, I talk an awful lot. We talk an awful lot. But uh, I just want to say thank you and congratulate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judge Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Daryl Boyd of the Buffalo Five. I just want to add on a couple things that you said.